Welcome back to another episode of the Hustle Nation podcast. Today, as always, we've got a real treat. Ms. Laura Aura is in the house. Laura helps you shift the mind fuckery. That's right. I said it. The mind fuckery. And she's a speaker, alignment coach, and host of the Gutsy podcast. So you and I had met oh, probably close to a year ago. We were both speaking at the same event. I don't even remember which one it was anymore. And you had kind of a really unique take on mindset in business. And I had bookmarked you. I'm like, we need to connect because what you do and what you talk about, I think really resonates with our audience and, and can benefit everybody who listens to the show. So thank you for being here. Um, you do a lot of different stuff, specifically helping people shift the mind fuckery, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But I want to hear about your journey and how you got to where you are now. So I quit the job. I'm, I've, I've got this baby in my belly that I'm about to deliver. I've got this brand new business that I have no idea what I'm doing. And every day, it was just about figuring out everything, right? You know, all, you know, obviously, I had my son, so I've got this little baby. I've got this little business. Everything is new and confusing and chaotic and exciting all at the same time. And over the course of 16 years, I grew not just my guy, my baby, you know, he's now 16 at the time of recording. Um, but I grew the business as well. And I figured it out along the way. I um, hired employees, I expanded, I, you know, leased an office, we built it out, we did the whole nine yards. Um, and, and it was one of those things where I absolutely loved what I was doing. But I did not realize how much I was giving away parts of myself every single day you know I, I think it's such an interesting thing because when you go into business just so everybody knows um your personal internal shit does not go away in fact it gets amplified <laughs> <laughs> like if if um people pleasing is one of your tendencies um that shit's going to come out loud and clear in your business or in your position and so you know i over the years while we were growing um, I felt like I was falling apart on the inside, but I didn't feel like I could own that because I had responsibilities, right? I had paychecks to figure out how to cash. I had um, clients to serve. I had a family to feed and everything just got really heavy. And at the height of the pandemic, of course, we all have our own turning points here. Um, it, it all crashed down. You know, at, at that point, I was in such a terrible position physically and mentally. My health was falling apart. I hadn't paid myself in four months. Um, I, I, my health was literally falling apart in, like, in front of me. Um, my, my employees' paychecks were bouncing. Uh, clients were in and out. It, it was a shit show at the best. And I just, I made the hard but necessary decision, like, we got to reset this. I can't keep going on like this. And it's really hard, I think, sometimes when you're in that position because you do have that sense of responsibility. And in many ways, I feel like I did have failing moments. So I think one of the most important things that I learned from that was that did not equate that I am a failure. It means that I'm a human being and I was learning something. And unfortunately, that ended up affecting others. So I released my whole team all at once, packed up all my shit. I came back to my house. And for the next six to eight months, I spent time in my basement alone, reabsorbing every role in my company and uh, figuring out what was next. And you know what? The, one of the most profound things that happened during that was I realized one day that I hadn't asked myself in probably over a decade, what does Laura want? I had built my entire business off of what I felt that I should do what everyone else needed of me, what everyone else wanted. And so it's no wonder that I, like everything was falling apart. I wasn't aligned with most of it. Probably 20% of it I was aligned with. Everything else was a should. So I started to really like unpack what that meant. You know, I was interviewing entrepreneurs to talk about all the things that we all think and feel, but don't have a space to be heard or to talk about it and to be vulnerable. I started speaking, I started teaching people, I started coaching, and I realized, I don't, I don't want to do branding anymore. I want to speak. I want to teach. I want to impact people's lives in a different way now. And so, long story short, 
I have since sold the branding agency. It was a big decision, but a liberating one. I had a commercial building that we had purchased. I sold that as well because that no longer was in alignment. And I am hyper-focused on helping people to, one, figure out who they are, own what they want, and then learn how to take steps forward to start having it. That's a tremendous uh, story. I mean, you talk about resiliency and, you know, fighting through. And, you know, I, I want to, you know, dig into uh, when you kind of finally made that decision to sell the, the branding agency. because. You, you kind of just said that you just got to that conclusion, but I, you know, I, I can tell that that was not just a, <laughs> that I was not just, a, I didn't just finger. wake up one day and, and decide, no, you're correct. Right. And, and, uh, you know, I think a lot of times this is a, when, when people are making pivots like this in life, um, they think sometimes it's gotta be a snap judgment or it's gotta be an all or nothing, or it's gotta be in, and in reality, when you talk to most people, it, it, it tends not to be that way. So can you just share, you know, just kind of how, like, how you even got to that self-revelation of what do you really want and and how did you have the confidence to make that pivot? Yeah, for sure. So in that period that I was talking about that, like six to eight month period, it was just about survival, right? I mean, we're not at that point even talking about making any life changes other than um, can we get to the end of this day? And, and that's yeah. the, the honest truth. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. And so as all of that dust started to settle as the world started to shift into its new reality as like I was no longer trying to just save everything everything got like you know back to a new cadence and to a new normal I decided honestly and this is a, a good thing that I want everyone to know too is I decided in that moment one of the things that like what does Laura really want Laura found out that she does not like being a boss I don't like having employees and it's something that I never felt like I could own because that's just how you build a business, right? Like to be successful, you have to have employees. Wrong. <laughs> there are dozens of different ways, hundreds of different ways to be able to grow a business successfully the way that you really want to. <clears throat> so side note there. But beyond that, I, you know, I was running the agency then on my own in a different way. I had a great group of phenomenal freelancers that were working with me so it was restructured in a new way and what I started to notice was how I felt going to work doing my work like promoting my work I'm, I'm just very adamant about tapping into how I feel what I'm saying to myself like self-awareness again underrated tool my friends self-awareness is everything your body is a compass that's forever trying to talk to you your only job is to listen and so I started to notice like, oh, I haven't, I haven't wanted to promote branding for months. I haven't wanted to strategize what my next step is. I haven't wanted to think about how I can grow or expand this. So that's kind of interesting because that's never been the case in this scenario, right? It's always been about how are we growing? How are we expanding? What's next? Like, what do I want people to know that we're capable of? I think there was a point where I was like, oh, shit, I haven't posted on Facebook in like three months, right? But it, it didn't bother me. It wasn't like a, oh, I need to go fix this. It was a realization of, hmm, what is this, what is this maybe trying to tell me? And then I started noticing that I had resistance against like even going and doing the work. I started procrastinating. Holy mother. Like procrastination was horrendous because I just didn't want to do the work that I was doing. And it all just started to stack up. I started to get sick again. I started to just like, my energy was really off my, uh, just my whole like existence. Like I just wasn't happy. I mean, just put it in plain terms. I wasn't happy. And I can remember there was a day where, you know, at, the, at this point, <clears throat> I'm handling the the branding stuff because I'm also a person of an integrity. So I'm going to do the things that I say I'm going to do. So I'm managing the branding stuff. I'm managing this commercial building and the plans to build it out. And I'm trying to grow myself as a speaker and a coach. And like, I'm not doing anything well. Like everything's just barely getting done, but nothing is moving forward. And the tension every day just grew and grew and grew. And I got to a point where I'm like, I sat back in my chair. I'm, 
in my office by myself, by the way. <laughs> I sat back in my chair and I was like, holy shit. I don't, I don't want to do branding anymore. And it was horrifying. Because what <laughs> happens? The brain. You've been doing this for 16 years. You've got a degree in this. You've been doing graphic design for 22 years at this point. What is everybody else going to say? Oh, and you're, you're just going to like shut this down? How are your clients going to get taken care of? What are you going to do about money? I mean, the, the, it's like the floodgates of mind fuckery opened up, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I called my husband. And I'm like, I'm having a, a fucking crisis here. I need you to come here. And he came in and I, and I'm not even kidding you. I, I couldn't even replicate it if I wanted to. It was like my soul cried. Right, like, and I just screamed out loud to him, "I don't want to do this anymore." And it was the first time that I had ever really, truly owned what I wanted sure. in a space to give myself permission to step forward to what I really wanted to. And that was in July of twenty-three, August twenty-three. By December, it was sold. So That's it was, it was a, uh, it was not an overnight decision. I fought it for sure, right? Even after making that decision, I did that dance with myself and the what ifs and the who's and the how am I going to and just that whole release portion. And then, you know, there's uh, a gal that I had been mentoring for years. It's an incredible small business, creative agency, growing, thriving, hungry. And I was like, what if I just call her up and see if maybe she's interested? And I got on a Zoom with her, and we had an hour-long conversation, and ultimately she is the person that ended up purchasing the business. And now, now my clients get to live on with new support. They get to continue to growing, right? It was a beautiful transition for me. It was the right next step for me and what I had created that was really important to me. So, you know, we fight ourselves from doing the things that we really want to because of all that mind pottery that pops up, all that stuff that we have convinced ourselves that we can't for multiple reasons, usually pertaining to other people. Laura, I think that may be one of the most powerful stories we've heard on this podcast. <clears throat> and I think the reason I say that is it's just because it's so relatable. Um, being an entrepreneur with a marketing background who's gone through a very similar journey in, in many ways, I'm just like, whoa, that really hits close to home. Um, kind of like when you see a commercial, you're like, whoa, is that me? Yeah. Um, but I want to go back to something that stuck out to me. You said giving away parts of my life. And as an entrepreneur who sometimes is spread thin, there's been times where I've had multiple businesses and you kind of step back and you think about things like I, I've always done at the end of every year. It's like you take a, a moment to self audit, to self reflect and I've always asked myself, like, it, it, am I happy doing this? Is this what I want? Is this getting me to where I want to be in the next three to five years? And for, for many, many years up until recently, the answer was always no. because And, and that's introduced mindfuckery, which is I've got so many things going on. How do you scale a business when you have four? How do you become the best father or husband, in my case, when you have all this shit going on? And so I'm curious, when you've worked with people, how is it that you get people, I think one of them is the self-awareness, but how do you get people to understand that you're, you are not just going to burn yourself out, but you are, you're giving yourself away? And how do you change that? Yeah, great question. You know, I think one of the things first is slowing down long enough to even acknowledge it. You know, we're, yeah. we're on 100 mile an hour autopilot every single day, and especially if you're in entrepreneur mode, build it mode, expand mode, you know, chasing the next thing, adding on, how do we grow, all that stuff. It's like all of a sudden, you, one day you saw everything, and then over time, you began to see one thing. And all of those other things that truly, honestly, are the most important, right? Those become when I can fit them in. This becomes, um, like, Oh, we haven't done anything for, for weeks. Oh, we haven't gone on vacation. Oh, when I'm, when I'm with my kids, I'm not present. Like, you have these little moments, and it's like, oh, I want to fix that. But then it's like you snap right back into that laser mode, right? And so you have to slow down long enough to even acknowledge, what do you really want? 
That's the big question. That was literally the pivotal question that I asked myself when I was sitting in the basement. What do I actually want? Do I want to have three or four businesses? Do I want to be working 60 hours a week? Do I want to be putting like all these light things on the back burner? <laughs> right? Like there's different seasons of, of life and business for sure. And there are definitely certain times in business that it requires more of your attention. But we get like honed in on like that just becomes the new normal. And we forget about all the other things that we really want and that are important to us. So that's where you have to start. You have to slow down long enough to acknowledge, is this, is this how I want to live? Like, do I feel like I, do I want to run these businesses or do I feel like I have to? Do I, do I want to continue to push and to grow or am I actually really happy at the level that I'm at? Right. It's, it's always, it's always this push for more. And sometimes that's true, but more often than not, it's, it's not. It's just more for the sake of. So how do we connect some dots? You say, what is it you really want? When I say that, or when I hear other people say that, I translate that to what is your vision? And I am shocked when I talk to people, I ask this question a lot, how many people, and we, we talk about this a lot in our, our business, I can't believe how many people don't know what they really want. I have no idea. So how do you, how do you solve for that? How do you help people? Because that to me seems like one of the first steps to getting out of this mindfuckery problem. Yeah, for sure. You know, more like, I would say nine and a half times out of 10 when I'm sitting across from someone, whether it's in person or in Zoom, and I'm like, what do you actually want? Deer in headlights. I have no idea. No one's ever asked me that before. I haven't thought about that in a long time. Right? Like, we feel like we don't have permission to even explore that on our own, let alone have the time to explore it. Right? Like, time always ends up being kind of a sidekick to these things because. I don't have time. I don't have time. I've got too much to do. I've got a full schedule. Okay, well, that could be a whole separate podcast episode because that's a different type <laughs> of mind fuckery where um, we're unintentionally doing the things that we don't want to do to avoid the things that we actually want. There's actually a saying that I do TikTok videos and reels on that always gets people like pleasantly wound up. And that's the thing that you want the most is often behind the thing that you resist the most. And so if you start looking at what are you resisting, what are you avoiding, that can often start to lead you down a road to show you what's actually really important to you. Because the want isn't always about like the grand scheme of life. Sometimes that's too overwhelming to really picture, especially if you haven't gone down that road in a while. But if you start to notice, like, I really resist having any kind of downtime. I, I'm not, I'm not relaxing. Like, you know, I'm, I, my calendar is consistently packed. I'm hustling all the time. I'm running every, you know, every which way. Let me maybe just sit with that for a minute. If I'm resisting it, maybe what I actually really want the most, just some white space in my life. But I'm unintentionally resisting that by packing my calendar, by over committing to things, by doing too much stuff, by saying yes to stuff I wanted to say no to, right? Like the want could be like singular things, could be seasonal things, could be just like right now type of things. So if you think if you start to shift from what do you want, I'm not asking you to figure out what you want in life for the rest of your life. I'm asking you what is important to you right now that you're unintentionally sabotaging. And if we start to really like massage it in that way, you can start to uncover, like you really get to start unpacking little pieces of your life and you're like, oh shit, like I didn't even realize. And that's the thing. I don't, I didn't even realize I was doing that. I didn't even realize that I wanted that, right? And so when we start to pair those things together, you can really start to get a lot of information about yourself for yourself. You know, Laura, I heard three things kind of come from that, right? You know, self-awareness, asking yourself questions in time. And you know, self-awareness is such an interesting thing because if it was just that easy, everyone would just be self-aware, right? Sure. But, you know, I mean, how many people that we run into where they think they're self-aware, but you need sometimes an outside force to, to, to help with that. And, you know, I think about a, a conversation I just had recently, uh, you know, going through kind of this visioning uh, exercise with someone. And, you know, it was the asking questions and frankly, just a little bit of time 
to actually ask yourself these questions and to think through it. Because uh, like in, in this conversation, what I thought was interesting is, is this person basically set an income goal, right? Like I want to make, make so much money in five years. And then through, through dialogue, it was like, okay, great. But why? And even, even in that, right. The, 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 the gut reaction was, well, cause I like nice things and I want, you know, I want this and I want that and whatever. And it's like, really? I mean, really? Uh, well, not, I mean, yeah, I do, but I guess that's not, and then you ask more questions. What it really came down to, it was about, it was about their family. Like that, that's actually what was really tugging at it. Right. But, and, you know, it took a couple hours to get to that point. But when you think about how much clearer you can be and just, you know, sometimes people think they need to think about this for months and years, you know, sometimes it's just, just take an afternoon. Have, create some white space, ask some, some, self, yourself some questions, right? Just, just think, challenge, write those things down, challenge your thinking. And that's to me what I really, I, I really pulled from what you were talking through, right? Is just a lot of times we can ask ourselves these questions, but we're so quick to say, well, I got, I had this thing in though in 15 minutes. So, well, that's not really enough time to be really thinking through not a, you know, what, what are you resisting? What are you embracing, et cetera? Yeah. 15 minutes, um, you know, don't get me wrong, can be powerful if you're just like, you know, chilling out for a second, but it's it's usually not enough time to really like have an aha moment and to make a, you know, a, a noticeable shift in your world. You, you could have a moment, but you have to give yourself the time and permission to, to also sit with it. Let it marinate for a little while, you know, because on the other side of that, then we go into fix it mode. How do I flip the whole table over and change it today? I had a realization, so I want it all fixed tomorrow because I don't want to be uncomfortable anymore. I'm telling you, if you give yourself the time to sit in your discomfort for a little while, you will make bigger changes in that period than any quick fix moment that you'll ever have. Three point. Laura, speaking of that, you said a lot of people want white space. I think for some of us, maybe maybe it's a man thing, I'm not sure, but um, some of us don't know we need white space. And I'm going to take this to another subject that I'm going to try to connect some dots. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. But in the last couple of years, I've really tried to take care of myself. And I, I've felt like self-care is what helps me fill the cups of others. So I can't fill the cup of my family, my friends, my clients, unless I'm taking care of myself. I've got to fill my cup. So by doing that, that could mean a lot of different things. It could mean going out and playing golf. It could mean going on a long walk or a run. And when I'm, when I'm there, especially if I'm not listening to anything, it is a time to sit with my, my thoughts, good, bad, or indifferent. And that, to me, is oftentimes the white space where I can have deep thoughts, where I, I create a lot of ideas. Believe it or not, it's when I'm running or walking. Yeah. Um, and... I come back and I'm like, I, sometimes I'm liberated, sometimes I'm frustrated, sometimes I'm uh, developing that self-awareness to say, yeah, I really need to change some habits here if I want to get to this goal by this time. What do you think about that? Yeah, well, I just grabbed a piece of paper because my brain was like, oh, there are things that I want to say here. You know, let's, let's just honestly open the playing field here for a second. Self-care has been skewed in every direction humanly possible. And self-care for men, historically, has been seen as weak. And for women, it's been seen as selfish. It, it's literally how I call it bullshit. has been framed. I absolutely call bullshit alongside you. Since when did, like, taking care of your body become a, a bad thing? Since when? I think it, it's a necessary thing. It is a you necessary should be proud of it. human thing. Absolutely. And that's the, that's the reframing, I think, that we're actively collectively working on as a society is that taking care of yourself is not this like lavish self explorative thing it's like daily maintenance in the same way that you brush your teeth every day hopefully <laughs> in the same way <laughs> in the same way that you're sleeping every day in the same way that you're showing up for your business or for your kids or for your spouse right like why is taking care of your physical and mental body a bad thing it's not it's a necessary thing because what happens i i would imagine the three of us have all been here at some point or another you neglect it you forget about it you don't prioritize it it's not like 
it's not in the forefront and what happens over time, it catches up to you. Whether you think it will or not, it always will. And that comes out in your mental health, it comes out in your physical health, it comes out in the way that you respond to things, it comes out in the way that you are with your family, your ability to grow. Like we have to change the conversation. I don't even want to call it self-care anymore. And I don't know what the right next terminology is, but it's just about like taking care of your human. <laughs> like, yeah. I, like me sitting outside yesterday, I, I live in Pennsylvania. It's been gray for what feels like eight years. <laughs> the sun was out. It was like 65 degrees. And my body was like, go to the light. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so I go outside unapologetically and just sit on my back porch for like 25 minutes. What? That's quote unquote self-care. Right? But I'm not labeling it as that because I think sometimes we label it, the label makes it feel like one more thing. And maybe, maybe that's where some of the tension is. Maybe that's where some of the resistance is because we feel like it's one more thing on top of all the other things. So what if we just start to incorporate it as part of the way that we move about this world in the same way that you brush your freaking teeth? You know, Laura, it's interesting you say that. Chris and I have had a lot of these conversations because I, you know, I've been pretty transparent about it. I went through a good 20-year period where I didn't take care of myself at all. <laughs> at all. Uh, I was solely focused on my career. Everything else took a backseat. And, uh, you know, to your point, at some point it shows up. Right. And I think one of the challenges that, that I saw with it is uh, when you have that linear focus on something, you have success, right? So you have success, you're getting rewarded, you're getting pats on the back, you're, 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 you're getting that, you know, that energy from that linear focus. And it's, it's hard to then say, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to just pivot that just a degree. And then, which you know, as you learn, can actually accelerate it, but you, you've gotten so entrenched because, you know, we all know in, in life, right? There are, you refer to it, there are seasons, right? There are times where you just kind of have to go, right? And, and there is no balance. It's just, you're all in, right? Like, you know, you talk about, you know, having a kid. I, you know, I, I joke about the fact, like when you're, you have young kids, you know, 10, 15 years later, you don't realize how little sleep you actually can function. At, <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Right? Like, it's, but that's just, that's just the part of it, right? Like that's the, the, the season of life. Um, and so I think, you know, that's, it's a great point about even just the term self-care, right? Like no one, when they say self-care refers to brushing their teeth, yeah. like uh, to your point, like that's, that's an assumption. <laughs> that's the assumption. But, but the minute it's anything slightly outside of that, I thought that was, that was such a profound statement about it being, you know, viewed as weak for men and selfish for women. Um, and, you know, I would, I would say it, it, I mean, that's, it's true almost for both, right? Like I, I know for myself, I had head trash for a long time about, yeah, if I'm waking up in the morning and I'm working out, you know what, that's, that's selfish because my team needs me to get in early. So that, you know, even if it's a half hour workout, that's an hour and a half that you're tied up, right? Be between warming up and cooling down and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, is, is that selfish? When in reality, as once you get into it, you realize, well, it actually accelerates, you know, and, and you can't do it all the time, right? You can't do all things all the time, but you know, there's this, this mindset of, I, I think that's a great point of, you know, what, what really should we even refer to it or should we even refer to it or should it just be preventive maintenance, right? Like that's just life. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. You know, it's, it's it, and that mind trash. Yes. So in my world, I call it the mind fuckery because that's what literally what it is. It's this back and forth banter, this this one foot in, one foot out, this one of the all that questioning stuff. And it's like <laughs> when you think about like how how in the world as a society, as individual human beings, have we gotten to the point where you feel bad working out, taking care of your body so that you can be better for your team and your family? Like <laughs> holy shit balls like we've got work to do <laughs> but that work the work is 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 twofold right it's the internal work but it's also the external work collectively and celebrating those things and starting to see how okay what if i personally reframe that 
going to the gym for 30 minutes every morning is not letting my team down. In fact, it's accelerating my team. It's supporting my team. Because if I keep going at this pace of not taking care of my physical and mental body, I'm not going to be able to lead a team at all. I'm not going to be able to show up for them. I'm going to be sick more often. I'm not going to be optimal for them, right? Like, sometimes this whole, like, people-pleasing thing comes into play and, like, I don't want to let other people down. I mean, that is, when I, everybody that I've talked to over the last, you know, two decades, it always is in, like, the top reasons why people don't do things, worrying about how it's going to affect other people. And it's like, since when did other people's needs become more important than my own? And when uh, when I take care of myself, that does not equate to now I'm no longer helping people. I think that we think that it's a black or a white. We're either a people pleaser or we hate people. Like, <laughs> there, there's actually there's actually yeah. quite a lovely scale here, right? Where when I take care of myself, I'm actually able to help the people that I love the most better. I'm able to show up more connected for them. I'm more present with them. I'm healthier for them. Right? Like I get to do more things instead of laying on the couch with another yet another migraine. We're actually going out for the day instead and doing things together. You know what I mean? So taking care of yourself does not equate to you can no longer help other people. It helps it allows you and empowers you to help the right people in a better way. And I think I think just to add to that, like for my for my own self like going going through this and Chris and I have talked about this. You know, to me, I, I I don't have like lifelong goals of being a triathlete or anything like that, right? Like a super athlete. But it was when uh, actually when Chris and I were going through our own exercises, right, that we coach other people on. It was me connecting to my why of of you know being a a great husband, a great father, a great business leader, and a great community leader. You know, lifting other people up. I was like, I can't do any of that if I'm dead. <laughs> and and it was. As dumb as that says, sounds out loud, it was. It wasn't until like I went through that exercise, had that space, asked those questions, to say, okay, at at what point is this on? Like, okay, for twenty years I got away with it, but if I do it for another twenty, I'm not. So, at at what point do I actually care about my why enough to do the things that need that that need to happen? And it it was once you know once you connect that to what your real why is, what, you, what you're really passionate about, what you're really trying to accomplish in life. Then these things, to your point, it, it doesn't even, it doesn't feel like self-care. It doesn't feel like I'm trying to do something. It's like, no, this is, I, I have to do this in order to accomplish this, right? Like if I want to grow a business, I have to talk to potential clients, <laughs> right? Like it's yeah. that simple. I mean, it's a way of life. It, it's, it's how I'm able to do and be. It, you know, it's it's changing the conversation, not just externally as a society, but absolutely internally every single day and sometimes in every single moment. And, you know, sometimes when you're introducing new things like that, I'll, I'll just say here real quickly, is that it feels hard and unnatural because you're just not used to it. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't mean it's new. You got to give yourself some time to acclimate it, right? You got to give your, your subconscious mind an opportunity to say like, oh, Okay, this is we're doing a new thing. We're learning a new habit. I got you. I'm on board, right? Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight you a little bit, but I'm open, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's this consistent like showing up even when it feels hard or different or weird or wrong, knowing that you're doing the right thing for yourself. Eventually, that becomes a new healthy subconscious habit, and you don't even think about it. It's like going outside and sitting in the sun when it's out is a non-negotiable for me. It, it's not something I have to think about or convince myself or or not talk myself out of anymore. I'm just like literally from my office, I can see when the sun is out. I know when I need like a little bit of a mind break right out the door I go because I know how I feel afterwards. And if we start tapping into how do I feel when I do these things with myself, that that my friend can be a real big game changer. Well, I want to add a new perspective to this conversation is that if you can get yourself maybe from Dustin's perspective from not working out to working out two or three times a week, I've always used kind of my example, which is um, I, I bought a Peloton, spent a lot of money on it. My wife's like, yeah, you'll never use that thing in three months. And until I got to like the hundred workout mark in, I don't know, like a year, she was like, Oh wow, that's great. 
And then I finally got to like 750 exercises in, I don't know, two years. And to me, it became a discipline. And I'll tell you what, even though it might have only been in the beginning a couple times a week, then it turned into five days a week. And then sometimes it turned into two, two exercises, five days a week. Creating a new discipline was to me creating a new habit behavior. And as you said, the last thing you said was feeling. I'll tell you what, mentally and physically, I feel amazing. I feel like I started my day at 5.30 a.m. and I just accomplished something that 50% of the population is not doing. Probably a lot more than that, by the way. And not only that, that feeling that I get mentally and physically, but I really believe now that I've, I've really started to take care of myself in the last five years is that that impacts everything else throughout my day. So not only that mental energy and that physical stamina, I can now you know, pound out eight hours of work or nine hours of work, and I can do so with an amazing mindset and amazing attitude because I just feel like I did something really good. So I, to me, it, it, that's about developing discipline because so long when I've looked in the past, I wasn't disciplined. Maybe that was why I wasn't reaching my goals. But I think if you can do that hard thing, you walk away feeling good. Boy, I mean, now you can pour into other people. And that, that's just my perspective. Oh, I, I could not agree more. I, there's something it, we'll have to connect on Peloton because I'm looking at mine right now. I'm Laura Ora on the Peloton. That, that, of course you are. <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> what else would I be? I just need to change it on LinkedIn, apparently. That's, that's my, yep. the, the last place yeah. that needs to be updated. But, you know, it's one of those things where I know how great I feel after I do it. For me personally, and this is not an ad for Peloton, it's just the truth. It supports not just my physical body, but my mental body my mental body like feeding good like healthy words into my mind while i'm moving my body is a recipe for awesome for me so find find what that thing is for you first right like if you're trying to force yourself to do something that you hate of course you're not gonna stick with it right like you gotta find something that feels really good for you even if that means dancing like a fool in your basement for 10 minutes every day like it doesn't have to be anything other than what feels good to you but i find it's not doing the thing it's getting to the thing you know when i'm sitting on my couch upstairs and i'm like oh, i really should go ride the bike i know it'll make me feel better right i'm doing that whole like come ho thing I, I find that it's really helpful to interrupt that, that pattern because that's feeding the old story for you so an interrupter that i like to infuse is do you want the same or better Literally, I just, when I, when I notice that like mind fuckery, that shatter start to happen, do you want the same or better? And that's often enough for me to like get my ass up and I come downstairs and then guess what? I've never been mad for a ride on my Peloton. I've never, never. been mad after taking a walk. I've never been mad after sitting out in the sun, right? Like it's, it's forming that new habit and you're a thousand percent right for us. It's discipline. Nobody's going to come to do that for you. I'm not going to show up and be like, it's time to ride your Peloton, Chris. No, like these are the, these are the things that you have to build your own um, resiliency and your own discipline within yourself to take the steps forward. That's gold right there. I mean, the, the same or better question. I, I love that as a, as a disruptor, you know, to just break the, the log jam because it's, it's such a great way to get yourself refocused, right? Like to your point, when you're rolling out of bed and it's like, yeah, what do I, what do I really want? Right. <laughs> it's yeah. like same you, or better. What you, do you want? You've got to cut that what's happening in the head because it will, it will run rampant as we are all very familiar. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, uh, Laura, from your perspective, you uh, talked about a couple of these different things uh, from disruption to the self-awareness to asking yourself questions. You know, when, when you talk about kind of breaking up the, the mind fuckery, as you, as you say, right? Like, are there, is there anything else that maybe we haven't covered that you think is, is a great takeaway for someone if, when they're, when they're having that kind of self-talk in their head, the voices in their head, so to speak, that are, are destroying them in many ways. Mm, yeah. You know, I think, uh, I think a missing piece that I really want to slide across the table is about compassion and curiosity which might sound a little floofy here for a second, but stick with me. So 
when we notice that we're we're going down that road, we notice that we're talking ourselves out of. We notice that we haven't rode the Peloton or taken the walk or had the held had the self care or any of that stuff. We immediately want to go to the opposite end of the spectrum, which is to beat ourselves up or see here I am again. See here we go. This is just what I do. I'm a piece of shit. I don't know what I'm doing. Nobody respects me. No one's gonna buy anything for me. Like holy mother, right? Like it's a whole other end of the spectrum and i think a big key piece that's missing is not just that self-awareness that we talked about earlier but the next step of being curious about what it means in the first place so really get to know you got to get to know yourself again right we've all been through circumstances and situations some traumatic experiences certainly world and societal changes like we want to learn to just get to know ourselves again what does this mean for me what is this trying to tell me every single one of us has an inner child that still lives on inside of us and when we start going down that like hardcore path where we are literally just kicking our own asses that's an invitation to soften and get curious about what does it mean in the first place this this is this is trying to teach me something. This is my inner child trying to get my attention and saying, I need to be seen. I need to be heard. I need to be loved. I just need someone to understand me. So instead of beating yourself up, I invite you to get curious about what's happening on the inside. Get down on your own level. What are the, whether that's journaling through it, whether it's talking it out, whether it's seeking support, whether it's going through therapy, whatever feels right for you. Give yourself a chance to unpack it a little bit because there's information in that heightenedness that's happening in your brain. But we, we just want to shush it, put it away, put it in a box, tuck it under the bed, right? Spoiler alert, the box comes back out. <laughs> it, it doesn't go away just because you tuck it away. It will show its way in other situations in your life. So give yourself a chance to hear yourself. Feel yourself. Really tap into what is this trying to say? What do I really want in this situation? How can I nurture myself in this space instead of an invitation to beat yourself up again? Why are people so scared to do that, Laura? Because that seems well, like it, it, it's fear. Fear is a big one. So there's a couple of different things that tend to come up, but one of the biggest things is two of the biggest things is one, not wanting to, to relive things or to feel the emotion. It's uncomfortable. I don't want to be uncomfortable. I just want to keep plowing on. It seemingly feels easier to just keep my head down and keep rolling on than it does to sit and like actually feel my emotions. So there's a fear, fear of feeling. But also, and more often than not, it's this fear of what do I have to do or what do I need to do next then? Because when you acknowledge a thought, a feeling, an emotion, a habit, that often means a decision that leads to a change. People don't like change. <laughs> so if I don't acknowledge that, then I don't have to change, even though I actually want to change. See how we're resisting the thing that we want the most? It all comes back around. So it's, it's what do I have to, now that I've acknowledged this, what do I need to do? Like in my story, acknowledging that I didn't want to do branding anymore meant that I needed to make the decision to sell the business and that I needed to take the steps to actually do that. When you sell a business, there's like a million things that you have to do, by the way. You know, you have to, there's a lot of stuff that has to close down and especially a business that's almost two decades old. There's a lot of things to do, but I can either decide to keep like pounding in and tacking in all of the stuff that I don't want and like further making this worse, or I can choose the temporary hard that ultimately ends up freeing me. That's powerful. Deep. Good way to end the show. Laura, thank you for being here. That was a powerful conversation. Uh, we don't always get that deep, but I think sometimes you have to. And everybody, literally everybody, needs time to reflect. They need time to be with themselves. They need that white space, as you call it. Love that. But before we let you go, tell the audience about your business and what you have going on. Yeah, so... Uh, LauraAura.com is the hub for all things me. I'm also at that Laura Aura on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. Um, I, I'm prioritizing right now um, 
helping people get out of their own way. And that's through um, my community called the Gutsy Collective. It's through one-on-one -on -one coaching, because sometimes you need just that personal extra attention one-on-one um, -on -one together. Um, and it's through workshops. So one of my favorite workshops to teach is called, guess what, the Mind Pottery Workshop. <laughs> And, uh, and it really helps particularly women to get out of their own way so that they can move forward and start to really feel good about it. So if any or all of those things are resonating with you, um, or you just need a little swift kick in the mental ass every day, I put up videos every single day to help you just like see things from a new perspective. I would encourage you to follow me as well. Awesome. Excellent. Now, in the podcast. Oh, I was just thinking, I was like, I'm sorry, excuse me. Let's Top not 100 about... Apple business podcast. Yeah, the Gutsy podcast is, uh, is, my, is my baby. Uh, two episodes every week. Uh, Tuesday is an episode with a guest. And Thursday is an episode with me. Power back episodes. Um, yes, top 100, uh, top 2% now globally, which is, which is kind of cool as well. But, um, you know, sometimes you just need to feed that goodness in your mind and to know that even if you're in a moment or a season where you don't believe in yourself, there's someone out there believing for you. I love that. And you've had on one of my favorite business people ever, Marcus Limonis, the prophet. I did. That was. Wild. We're going to have to talk about how you got him <laughs> because he is, I, I love what he does. Big fan. Yeah. It, uh, I, I'd love to chat about that. That was, that was a surreal experience for sure. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. We appreciate that. What an amazing conversation. I think uh, Justin and I talk about this all the time, but we try to bring on uh, a pretty wide list of different guests. And uh, quite lately, it just seems like every episode is a gold mine with different perspectives and ways that uh, we can improve. But I mean, selfishly, it's like I learned something and I'm improving from every episode too. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. And for all the listeners out there, we appreciate you. If you like the show, don't hesitate to give us a review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever. It just takes a couple seconds. Again, thanks for your ears. We appreciate the downloads. Until next time, peace.